Buckle up and listen down. It's time for Lucky Time Explosion. No Morgan today. So we've replaced Morgan. <laughs> this is it. If Morgan, if you're watching, this is your replacement. This is Rowan Dumont, everybody. Hey, Rowan, how's it going today? Hi, thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Why don't you tell people a little bit about what you do? Oh, goodness. Yeah. I mean, you're an artist. We know that. Yeah, that's true. That, 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 can you hear me okay? That's good. That's okay, good. okay, okay, okay. Um, I guess I'm a lot of things, but above all, you could say I'm an artist philosopher. Mm. Um, is, that like a, is that like a warrior monk? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's pretty cool. Now, now <laughs> I feel like I'm going to start thinking of myself as a warrior monk. That's a good way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I want this in my life. <laughs> well, what, what's the difference between what is an, uh, an artist philosopher? I mean, we know what an artist is. Sure. Sort of, maybe. I mean, that's also a big question. Which, yeah, that's up for know, debate. That's up for debate, which we could talk about later if you want. <laughs> um, so think about artist philosopher. So, I mean, that's like a compound word. Philosoph everybody kind of has an idea of what they think an artist is. But a lot of artists are also philosophers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like a lot of the, if you're thinking of art movements, particularly like the Dadaist, they were, right. they were philosophers. They had a philosophy of art. They had a philosophy of art, yeah. Um, like how it should be made or the sure. rules to make so, it Dada. So, so a philosopher is someone who's philosophizing about life. I actually do have a master's degree in aesthetics and art theory. You um, have a couple, right? You're I, double packing. Yeah. Pew pew. Yeah. And <laughs> I have I have, have a double I have a double master's. So MFA and MPhil. Right. What's wait, what's an MPhil? For those MPhil only, is um, including mas me. master. <laughs> <laughs> so MPhil is master of philosophy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like basically if you were going to get a PhD in philosophy, you would get an MPhil first. Mm. Okay. Okay. I originally was going to get a, P as you know, I was going to get a PhD in philosophy, but then I actually dropped out one semester before getting my PhD. So I got an MPhil. Oh, okay, okay. Because I'm changing my major, so. Well, speak, yeah, I was going to say, speaking of majors, I think, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, one of your majors is taboo religion and sexuality in art. <laughs> yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got, like, mind like a sieve, though. I remember that shit. You remembered, you remembered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me how that happened. Sure. What, what did, oh, God. How many taboo religions are there? And yeah. is it a, is a study of all of them? You know, it really, it, it, it could be, but that would be a lifetime study. Um, so that was my, so my undergraduate degree was from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And um, that was sort of a degree that I made up with my professors. Mm. And then I got them to sign off on it because I was, I had two major uh I guess you could say they were curators and art historians that I worked under. So one, her name was Marilyn Hallberg, and she had a background in um, Haitian voodoo aesthetics mm. and also Nigerian art. So I worked for her for like six years, putting together two archives from her collection. One mm. was of um, beaded Haitian voodoo flags. So I spent a lot of time in Haiti with her as well in the temples and meeting with the artists and stuff like that. And then also the second collection was her work that she did um, as, an, as a young person. Of uh, She lived in Nigeria for a long time and mm. she had a large collection of Nigerian art. So I helped put together both of those for the Smithsonian. So that was part of my work as an undergrad. And then the other part was I started working for this curator Otto Irvine uh, from Prague, and he is the curator of decadence, basically. Oh. So like. He's not in Berlin. No, <laughs> no. You that, would think. I'm, I'm he, I mean, I guess you could think that, but you know, Berlin and Prague, they they have a large connection, right? Yeah. They're they're part of that Bohemian triangle. Um, and from an American's perspective, they're right next to each other. I mean, they're right next to I mean, that's true, because they're only, like, what, six hours apart by train? Right. Um, Hell, so that ain't nothing. That's Yeah, that's just down the street. <laughs> America. Boop, boop. Wait, I want to I know. And I feel like our viewers might. If I, I know uh, what a voodoo doll is. But what's a voodoo flag? Okay. Sure. So when I think... What, <laughs> 
When we think as uh, passive, I want to say passive Americans who watch Hollywood movies, uh, we, we think of voodoo dolls in the way that they would use them in hoodoo tradition in New Orleans. Mm. Um, and hoodoo and voodoo are not the same. They're not exactly the same. They come from the same roots. So, so, so does uh, Santeria. Um, there's a, each island has a different version, basically. Mm. I mean, that's like a whole thing because it traces back to like the Yoruba in Africa and it has a lot to do with slavery. But if you're talking specifically about Haitian voodoo or voodoo, which is what I sort of specialized in from working with Marilyn. Voodoo? Yeah. Wait a minute. My wife says this. She's like, Does she? She, you know, she has some sort of connection, like one of her grandmas or something practice something. Okay. She keeps saying voodoo like voodoo, voodoo. voodoo. Yeah, that's sure. a thing yeah it oh, is a okay. thing sure We're, it's a thing wow um why don't it, i believe my own wife <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a personal question <laughs> I, I think I that like, you need to work now? out and maybe group therapy she's always right and i'm always doubting it what's going on with me i don't know what's wrong with me i'm like that's not how you say it i and i ain't never heard of that and voodoo, i can't google it there's different so there's different pronunciations depending on what your background is so, or if you speak Creole, right? Mm. So that's it's gonna ha it's gonna come down to um, what her heritage is, where her family is from, right? And that's gonna ha make a difference on the the pronunciation. Is that kind of part of the flags thing, where they're like de denoting different <laughs> um, sects of, of voodoo, voodoo, Valdoon? Hmm. So the flags are hand sequenced; um, they're hand beaded. With sequence and usually the majority of them um, have to do with different um, orishas or loas or lawas depending on who you're talking to and those are kind of like there's not a specific translation into English on what those words mean but they're kind of like the spirit god that is between humans and the depending on which variation you're coming from, uh, God, God, like we'll say God, like, but not in the Christian manner. Deities. Deities. Right. Yeah. So they're kind of like if, but they're not evil and they're not good. They're both. So if you, if you're thinking of from a, like a Christian point of view, then it would be like putting an angel and a devil together. Oh, I've got one of each on my shoulder. Okay, well, there you go. That's kind of like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> the balance of good and evil. I, I, I feel like I'm I'm doing it a disservice by describing it this way, but it's a it's the best way in English that I know how to describe it. So, do you speak any other languages? Oh no, no, <laughs> yeah. no. I've I've lived in like thirty different places around the world, but I'm di I'm dyslexic, so I have problems mm. learning language. Um, although I do, I did uh, write an entire chapter of my dissertation on linguistics, so I understand linguistics pretty well. But I, yeah, you write now, right? You're also right. I am a writer. Yeah. Yeah. My therapist said that I'm like, it's it's insane that I'm actually a writer because I am dyslexic. Mm. <laughs> um, you do the thing not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to torture myself. Nice. <laughs> Um, so the sequence flags, getting back to that. So a lot of them will depict, uh, like Ogun or Frida Azriel. These are their sort of, uh, loas, um, that they, each, each temple is off, often, um, dedicated to a different loa. Mm. And then also depending on the ritual, you call, you create a veve in the sand, which is like a drawing in the sand, basically, uh, or the dirt, depending on the space. And um, it's to call that loa to Forward. you. Yeah. yeah. It's like a traditional ritual. Mm -hmm. So that, that's interesting to me because you've got this background and schooling in these traditional, like, religious practices, right? Would you say that there's a lot of this stuff in contemporary art still? Was your or was your study of it in art mainly in like historical things, like as an anthropologist or an art historian, as opposed to like a contemporary critical thinker about art? And the reason I bring this up like this is because I think it's an interesting framework with you working also in like what I would consider to be the opposite end of some sort of anthropological cultural study when you're doing some high tech stuff, 
and you're working sure. like you're working in contemporary market. Sure. You did the Gucci podcast about NFT fashion. Like, it's an interesting dichotomy to me. Yeah, it is a strange thing. That's why I said I do a lot of things. I think what I'm really mostly interested in is thinking outside the box. Right. Which I've mentioned to you before. What, you, what, what conversation do we have? Remind me what our conversation So when we first was. met in 2020 and you were doing those video recordings. Yeah, yeah, those interviews. Yeah. yeah. And I kept saying, I think outside the box. Right. Right. So... Yes, technology and like the the art salons that I do, the art and tech salons. The, you know, you know, you know, you yeah. and I did one together. Yeah, um, those are very different than like any sort of like root magic or something that I might study. Right. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of weird crossover in these worlds too, though, because like I do a lot. I've I don't do NFT projects really because I'm very sensitive to the whole kerfluffle around it and like the cultural perception of it. I'm not in like a little nft bubble i still think it's interesting though and i hang out with like a lot of groups and one thing i've seen like i do a lot of vr art mm -hmm. so i end up going on vr art viewing excursions with a group called um digital bohemians club okay uh started by this girl in germany and they're on a spatial and oh yeah called, spatial yeah you know spatial yeah i know spatial and they have like they have something called spations on tour it's really mm -hmm. cute it's like every once in a while we get together and go tour like three people's virtual spaces and I think it's really interesting how there's a lot of like shamanic stuff in the NAT world. You see sure. tons of like psychedelic mushrooms and old shamanic like kind of meditation groups and these things that you wouldn't really associate with like a tech heavy, you know, group. Or I wouldn't anyway. I was like, I was a little surprised to log into like alt space for the first time in VR and find that like alt space, but I think it shut down now. But before alt space shut down, it was all just like meditation and and like traditional guru -y stuff. It's like, hmm. I don't find it so strange. It's the same thing. So I was telling you before, earlier, that um, there's this this um, photography lab. It's in Bushwick. It's called Photodom. So I had a meeting with, with them. Like dominatrix? So. <laughs> it does sound like that, doesn't like it? We're no, going to actually... dominate your photos <laughs> at Photodom. The name <laughs> of the name of the, the founder, his name is Dominic. So oh, actually, okay. it's just <laughs> Photodom because he goes by Dom. But yes, dominatrix could be cool. But that's definitely not what they're going for. <laughs> it's kind of like an East Coast name, too. I've known one other Dom. <laughs> Dominic. You don't hear a lot of Dominics outside of the East Coast. Oh, so... Um, I was talking to them about alternative processes, but also like taking the idea of like old and new technologies and right. bringing them together. So like one of the classes we talked about me teaching is a Van Dyke or cyan cyanotype printing, which is like a very old process, but right. taking digital negatives in order to mm. do it instead of like botanist type. You know what that thing. reminds me of? There was what? this thing. Do you remember seeing this a while ago? This was like a Kickstarter project from like a decade ago, I think. Because I'm getting to that age where everything I remember is from 10 years ago because I'm getting too old too fast. But there was like a Kickstarter for a photo developer, like an enlarger that you slap your iPhone in. And you use like you take a picture with your iPhone and it like turns into like a black and white negative that you slap into the little developer and makes a little picture. I actually think I want that. I do. It was cute, dude. It was nice looking. I, I think it was a really cool idea. Too. But that's what I'm saying. So so But now your alternative processes. Sorry yeah, to cut you off. No, sorry. So Dom was telling me in this conversation, like some of their best clients are like 17, 18, 19 year olds. Yeah. They were not even born when everybody was using 35 millimeter cameras. Which is why is is taking a 35 millimeter picture an alternative process now i mean oh. i think that, yeah that's kind of insane to me but, um but budge <laughs> gosh <laughs> oh man i'm old so anyways so like those are a lot of their clientele though and they are interested in alternative processes and film and stuff like that because i don't even want to say back in the day because i'm not that old but like <laughs> Back the sooner in the we day, get used to it, the I mean, more I time guess we so. Have. All right, so I'll say back <laughs> in the day, like those were very distinct, like film is film and alternative processes are alternative processes. Um, but they're kind of getting grouped together because it's it's more about like keeping those things alive. Mm -hmm. But you can also keep, be, so some of the questions those kids were asking were like, so I want to learn about film and alternative processes, but how can I put it on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> Well, take a picture of it with your phone after you're done making it instead of making it with your phone. I know that's hard to comprehend 
these days. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. so to me, it's about integrating new and old technologies, right? And not like everything is a tool. So yeah. that's something that we talked about in the art and tech salon too. Right. Like it's about getting to know tools and technology because like when photography was invented, painters freaked out. They were protesting. Oh yeah. Right. Oh man. It's huge. I remember we did a, back in the con artist days on Ludlow, we had a, a guy named John Millicenda mm -hmm. who's like his older dude uh, who like was just really passionate about photography. And he gave a whole presentation on the advent of uh, photography and, what it did to painting. Oh yeah. And I thought that shit was so interesting. And uh, now seeing what AI is going to do to painting is also interesting. But you could say to photography too. Oh yeah. To, to art. To art in general. Period. Period. Any content, right? Any, any content in the future in art. But it's a tool. And then at the end of the day, what are people... Okay, so you are the director of solace right is that uh, your official I, title my official title i don't title? actually know your official title i don't actually know it either <laughs> come to think about it what the hell do i do here do i even work here where are we what day is it no uh my official title is programming coordinator okay because it was studio manager then it was programming coordinator so it's, changed. it's changed it's always changing i kind of do everything here you know yeah I, that's I do, what I, thought. I do a lot of a little bit of everything Although I've shifted more into like the print master role, which is fun. Okay. So I'm doing a lot of the actual printing and now I have uh, Morgan's here helping out, you know? Yeah. So that's why we're able to do this show three times a week now, even without him. I'm looking at you, Morgan <laughs> and Marilyn. <laughs> but you guys do have art exhibitions. Like there's one up now. Oh yeah. And the majority of the work that I see in front of me is painting. Yeah. It's not AI art. Because some, it's we got not a little, photography. Uh, there are two fiber, art. fiber sculptures. It's that hand. But these are yeah, but these are all traditional. Yeah. These are all traditional techniques that I see. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's interesting to me. It's like you 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 straddle a lot of lines between traditional and like modern stuff. But your work is not it's like alternative, like we like. I've seen a lot of Van Dyke Brown prints from you. Van Dyke Brown, and yeah. A lot of like I exhibited photography. some here, uh huh. And then um, you don't oil paint though. I was an oil painter for fifteen years. Okay, never mind. You do oil paint. Yeah, <laughs> I I know how to make my own paints from scratch. I even like you when I was an oil painter all the time before I became a photographer. I would go to like Siena and go dig in the mountains to find like burnt the best oh. burnt Sienna to create the pigments for burnt Sienna paint. Nice. Like I used to make That's cool. all of my own paints. Making your own pigments is cool. That's do you know Max Taylor? Do you know a guy named Max Taylor? I don't think so. He's doing the same shit. He was like going around and going on these crazy hikes and like finding, you know, pigments grinding up beetle shells or whatever you had to do to get like you yeah know, interesting that's pigments. exactly what i did that's cool so i do do you I, like you're a process person i'm a process person yes, yes. i'm a process person too that's yes. why I, that's why i mess around with like different you know vr stuff like mm -hmm. when i do my vr stuff it's not about the painting it's about the process right it's not a, so that's what i'm saying like everything is a tool i'm not against old or new technologies, I'm against educating yourself and understanding them so that you can use them to the best way to create that piece of art. I don't want to like have an idea in my head and not know how to execute it. Right. I want to know all the different processes that it could require in order to make that. Piece I'm sure of you art. know like a thousand processes by now. Like a bunch of, of I mean, of just in things. photography, I know over 75 processes. That's a lot of processes. Y yeah. You can take a picture that many ways. Yeah. My brain hurts. Yeah, Why? Yeah, you can't. Ow. Oh, I'm sort of bleeding out of the nose now. Just trying to imagine how 75 different ways to take a photo. I, what, are, what are your favorites boxes right now? of cameras. So, like, some of my oldest cameras are like 125 years old. Oh, yeah. That's old. Yeah, it's pretty old. Yeah. They're working? Uh, most of them. <laughs> I can fix them. What lately is like. For got, the most part. What's caught your attention lately? Like, what, what thing are you really enjoying right now? Uh, I'm enjoying getting back into uh, doing um, cyanotypes again, Van Dyke printing, also sonographs because the sun's starting to come out. Mm, yes. uh, what I really loved doing was wet plate. That's the stuff that I have up in the museum in Prague right now. Nice. Yeah, we but got a wet plate of Liam in the back. There is a wet plate of Liam there. Mm. Yes. Um, but you have to be a certified chemist. What? To, yeah, to do that. How do you get certified? Got to go to the, the gov like government whole, man. Yeah. It's like a whole process. And then you have to register with the state because Damn. Um, traditional 
So traditional wet plate photography use cyanide, ether, and silver nitrate. Wow. So right, it's dangerous. Yeah, massively because Ooh. if you mix the uh, ether near something hot, you could blow yourself up, right? Cool. To make the collodion because the ether goes into the collodion. The silver nitrate, if you're not wearing goggles, you get a drop in your eye, it makes you go blind. This is inspiring me. I just want to make artwork now, like out of the most dangerous way possible. You should have, you should have a class on alternative processes that it might kill you. So, like number three, three top ways to make art that you might die from. Maybe have a poisonous, <laughs> poisonous plants in yeah. there as well. I heard that you're going to have to be registered with the government to make AI art, AI art in the future. Really? No, I'm making that up. <laughs> I think it should be though. No, I'm kidding. No, I think they're putting those. Um, they're they're not time stamps, but it's like some sort of like metadata stamp into AI, AI images now. Do, mm, do you not, know about this? No, not really. Yeah. So I mean, um, I, assu I assume they're like lousy with metadata, but what's new? That well, they've been talking about it. I know OpenAI has been talking about it. Creating uh, so when you create an image, and like. Um, with open AI, it'll create this metadata stamp within it. So if you run it through like a program or even Adobe bridge, the metadata yeah. stamp is going to be in there and it's going to show you it's AI. Mm, okay. Well, they have like AI detectors for everything. Yeah. Like there's that too. Papers to things. That's the thing you hear a lot now, which is it's, uh, it's driving me crazy. Cause like reality and society is already fracturing like in a million pieces. Mm -hmm. Everyone's convinced they know what's happening and mm -hmm. they're both like, they're all wildly different opinions. Oh yeah. And now you've got, I've seen a lot of people like saying, you know, well that's AI. And this, I ran this through the AI detector and it came up AI when it wasn't or whatever, or when it is. And I don't know, the future's looking uh, very, <laughs> I guess we need this metadata to figure out what the hell we're looking at and to, and to sue people for using our artwork in it. <laughs> I don't know, man. The future's weird. Uh, and speaking of the future, there is something coming up. In, are you going to NYC and FT? NFT, NYC? NF3B2 K4D dot JPEG. Oh my God, seriously. <laughs> Wait, is this Elon Musk's new child you're talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, that's the new one, dot JPEG. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm, I've, as you know, I've given talks with them in the past. I'm not going to go to the actual conference this year, but I'm yeah. going to a lot of the like after parties and there's right. a bunch of gallery exhibitions that coincide with it and things like what that. What shit coins are you buying? <laughs> What's the hot shit coin right now? What are we going to get? Meme coin. Meme coin. Yeah. Is it just called meme coin? Yeah. All memes. Let's see. I feel like each meme needs its own coin. You can't have one <laughs> coin for all of memes. It's, I think that will be the future. And I've always said that like, that's kind of my goal or like a life goal ambition. Something I think would be cool is like, I would love to be the director of memes at the MoMA. MoMA, if you're listening, do you have a meme curator yet? Here, here, if you, don't, here you go. I'm here. This, he's waiting. I'm ready for, for this you. Job. I'm growing old. My beard is getting gray. Hire me to curate a museum of memes immediately. I think people would go. <laughs> I think. I think we're going to have them in like history textbooks. We're going to like open up an art history textbook and it's going to be like Doge. You know, you're going to have to learn about the deal with its sunglasses. You know? Oh my God. <laughs> the, the, there's going to be like an entire chapter on Pepe the Frog, you know. Oh it's man, be crazy. did you see the Pepe the Frog uh, gallery at NFT NYC last year? No, no, no. Uh, it was there's... actually surprisingly really good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, because they had like this open call and so it was all different artists that did their own version of Pepe. Mm, I know a lot of people got to have that like waiting in the chamber too. You know, I'm sure a lot of artists did Pepe. I did my, I'll tell a quick story about Pepe the Frog. When I was working at a, a cafe, okay. it was called Conditory. It's like a little Swedish place. It was before Pepe the Frog had run off on 4chan with Donald Trump oh, and, and Hitler, right? So Pepe the Frog wasn't a Donald Trump Hitler meme yet. And I had drawn on the board, uh, Pepe the Frog with a coffee and it just said, this coffee is rare. Because of the rare sure. Pepe. Yeah. And like without like all the kids would always stop and photograph it. They're pulling their parents, like poking at it. And like it was a hit and everyone liked it. So I didn't touch it for like years. Uh -huh. And it's like it's crusted to the board. Oh my it's God. like old with age, it's like this faded Pepe. And then 2016 elections came around and uh, or was it 16? I guess so. And, and they came around and this started happening with Pepe the Frog. And I had this couple come in and they were just like, I just want to let you know that you have a hate symbol on your sign. And like, I was not plugged in enough at the time. Like I didn't give it, I, I like, I'm a politics nerd now. We don't ever talk about it on the show cause I don't, 
it's not the, it's an art podcast let's keep it to art right but um but i wasn't and it wasn't plugged in at all i didn't know what was going on at sure. all so i was like so incensed she comes oh. in she goes like this is a hate symbol and I was oh like, my god a hate symbol i'm like lady that is pepe the frog like i start going off on and then <laughs> and then i go home and i'm like what was she talking about and i look it up and i'm like oh I guess I have to change yeah. Pepe the Frog. I didn't want to. I was so angry that I just put the uh, the save Pepe hashtag on oh it God. instead. I just said, instead of changing it, I was like, hashtag save Pepe. And I changed him from saying this coffee is rare to be, be nice, man. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> that was the rough one. I think one. Pepe's trying to move past that. Pepe doesn't want that. Well, they killed him. The creator killed him off. Yeah. But they now all these NFT galleries are... Are using him again? Yep. But there always, but there is that kind of aspect of it in the NFT thing. Like I don't know if you watched any of those videos. Like there's a YouTube video here. We're on YouTube. Hello. Hello. Billion, Phylon, <laughs> or whatever, did a big one about like the the 4chan troll culture in NFTs and like especially with like Board Ape Yacht Club, how they very oh god very very obviously used a lot of like like Nazi symbolism in some of their sure, uh, I logos remember that. and things. But then a lot of people that own and trade board apes are not even associated with Nazis. Well, that's the thing that's so weird about it. Cause like nobody on, nobody in board apes, the people who actually Yuga labs, right? Sure. Like it's, it's like a hot, it's like a math book of ethnicities from all over the oh, world, yeah. but they're all like 4chan trolls. I think. So oh God. <laughs> I remember that they were like, this is and the, I remember that having like that. Um, it was one of the videos I watched about it where they had the girl on it. Uh, who was like their PR agent and was saying, she was like the idea that they would be intentionally putting this race though is uh, absurd and crazy. And then like you go and look in the game and there's like references to like Nazi scientists by name and like all this crazy shit dug in it. And you know, it was just this kind of big middle finger and then people got real tight about it. There's a bunch of like hip hop artists talking about. Yeah, cause a lot of hip hop artists collect board apes. Yeah, exactly. Then they were like, look, they're making fun of us. You know, they're like, they're laughing at us. So I think that's an interesting thing. So I wonder how many, how much of the Pepe booth is like a re reclamation or like a, a let's keep it going. <laughs> I don't know to tell you the truth. I don't know either. The <laughs> NFT thing is, is, is one of those things that like kind of bums me out a lot as a digital artist. As somebody who like, I want to love it. I want it to be good and I mm -hmm. want it to work. And it was such a disappointment just out of the, it, it's made me think about myself a lot. I'm like, do I like regulation? Am I calling oh, for, man. who am I? I know. I bought an Anarchy t-shirt at Sam Goody for $10 when I was 15. <laughs> How am I? How am I vying for regulation now? You just said Sam Goody. You dated yourself. Oh yeah, dude. I'm I'm letting it all hang out here. I don't think the kids are gonna buy it though. I'm 23. The beard's too gray. I gotta uh, shave it. You gotta shave it. Should I do that? Should I just shave my beard and like pretend to be younger and start using filters and just see if anyone digs up any older episodes where I suddenly age backwards? <laughs> <laughs> we should use AI filters to look like we're like 17. Like, uh, look at our new news. Well, um, I think that's what people use it for. But what's coming up for you next? Uh, we're running out of time. We're running, running out of time. We're running out of time already. Time flies when we're having fun. Oh, I know. What's coming uh, up with you? Well, currently, I think I mentioned it quickly before. I have an exhibition up. It's a group show. Um, it's about um, Kafka. and That sounds very Kafka-esque. It is Kafka-esque. That is the name of it. You're some heavy hitters, right? Oh, yeah. David Lynch is in it. <laughs> um, my former mentor, Gottfried Helvine. Mm. Uh, he's in it. Jake and Dinas Chapman. Um, myself. So I have 15 of my uh, wet plate collodion pieces. Oh, cool. Pieces. That's a good collection. Yeah, it's a pretty good collection. How big are they? Like? Yeah, it's like they're like uh, eight, 8 by 10. Um, they gave me my own little room. So that's nice. Nice. So I have that, that uh, which is on display right now. And that's kind of like the, the big thing that I can talk about. I have nice. possibly something coming up with Spring Break and At the Shed as oh, well. But Those are cool places. Yep. I'm going to zip it on that because I'm still working out contracts. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> we we got to get out of here. You're going to take me to NFT NYC. Let's you go. Wanna come? Let's Can go. you give me a ticket? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Next one. Maybe we'll, next episode will be live on the road <laughs> okay. from the Pepe the Frog booth. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for listening to Lucky Time Explosion. Watch the video edition on Patreon. A green screen extravaganza experience available exclusively to official Lucky Timers. 
This episode was recorded at Sola Studios in Manhattan, New York, helping artists make cool shit since 2016.